All right, so, so what we're about to see today is, is basically a, a research compilation that I did about what is called adversarial simulation frameworks. Uh, this is a, a number of tools that have come up recently, and basically uh, I'm going to go over them. Uh, I'm going to go on four of them that I reviewed, use the screenshots of it, and then maybe I can do a live demonstration on one of them. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, start. Yeah. Oh. oh, you haven't started yet? Oh, yeah, it's starting. Okay, so let's move to the next. Uh, so most of you know who I am. Uh, we talked about this already. I'm currently a director of security research at JAS, which is a, a, a security operations center uh, and machine learning company. So go ahead. So basically, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, a, a, an introduction. I usually do these things to teach myself about new technology. So we're, I'm not expecting to dominate or explain these technologies from A to Z, but mostly for you to have an idea and to know what this is about and what this can be used for. So uh, uh, adversary uh, simulation or emulation is basically a number of, of, of operations, a number of, or, or a method that describes a number of operations that can test networks, applications, um, networks, hosts, and defense architecture and resilience against an attacker. So basically, we have a number of tools that perform a, a number of systematic actions that are deemed or categorized as attacks um, against a sample image of your organization or, a, or even an, an actual live, if you want. I would suggest you do that. And then it will tell you, okay, if this type of attack were to happen on your organization, this is how you would do it, right? So let's go ahead. Okay, so this framework, basically what they have is they have a number of attack actions or uh, items that are taken from known exploitation, right? So most of, you will see this in a minute. Most of these actions are already known. They're already categorized. Uh, some of them are customizable. Uh, but basically they're known, uh, and there's also lots of post-exploitation actions. So this is for some into TTP, tools, techniques, and uh, procedures, right? Which is a very, uh, I guess, uh, cliche term. Uh, once these actions are executed on sample host, and uh, usually sample host is known as a golden image, I will go into what a golden image is. Uh, these actions are reported and logged for review. And the, you then do an assessment of what happened. So basically, uh, I was able to create a user, right? So then that shows that maybe you need to create a policy that uh, prevents from user creation by an adapter, for example. Or I was able to add a guest user or enable a guest user. I was able to add a new user to administrators group. You'll see that in a minute, so let's continue. So we talked about the golden image, right? The golden image is a, a template or a, for a virtual machine, virtual desktop, server, or hard disk, uh, which is usually uh, refers to a uh, representation of what your organization is. So for example, a golden image can be a clone or, or, or a copy of one of your standard deployment, uh, deployment desktop images. Any of you use this flip, flip me, uh, me, for example, or any uh, like um, IT uh, inventory type of software? Nor or Goes, for example. So, so every organization has like their own image, right? So some organizations, for example, they don't install Flash. Some organizations use Outlook, and it's already configured. You open your laptop, you log in. And now the, lab, the, the Outlook is already there, uh, Microsoft Office is already there, uh, Silence is already there, uh, your antivirus is already there, so that's one of that. That's a version of Java for your accounting version, system. Exactly, yeah. exactly, there you go. So that's, that's what you want. That's precisely what you want. What you want is you want a representation of what you have in your organization, either being a desktop, or either being a server, or either being an application, to test these things. By me telling you this, uh, you already 
probably can figure out that this is not just for the small organizations. Most of this, um, most of this uh, frameworks are based on Active Directory domains, so you have to have a, an Active Directory domain network, and a lot of the actions are quite sophisticated. So this is not your down the street hacker, screwing kitty, or fishing. This is this this test. Uh, uh, I would say um, post exploitation actions that are, that have been taken and researched from known advanced actors. So go ahead. So here's the uh, uh, some of the benefits of the adversarial simulation frameworks. Uh, one, they they will measure your response capacity. They show they they allow you to create or assess a risk level. They uh, test your attack surface. They um, allow you to uh, measure your detection telemetry. They allow you to test your incident response. If this type of attack or this type of adversary performs this is a specific attack, how will we respond? How long will it take to respond? Do we have the, the, the means to respond to this? Right? Exactly, do we have a playbook? Do we have a team? What are the actions if this were to happen? And of course, validate the French rules. Do we have the, the security controls in place? The GPOs that will prevent me from adding a new user and being on the trader. Do we have, do I have a segmentation of my network? If, if, is there any response if, if, if one of my computers was compromised? So, go ahead. Most of these uh, frameworks, they follow the attack framework, which is what's created by Micro. An attack is uh, adversarial tactics, techniques, common knowledge. So basically what they do is they have like a matrix of type of attacks, and, and every type of attack has an action, right? So some of these actions are defined operationally by commands. So for example, user add is a way to add a new user, right? Uh, who am I? We'll tell you what's a current user, right? So these things can be tr translated into footprinting, uh, information disclosure, um, being able to escalate privileges, for example, raw NAS, any type of user. And this framework is really taking off. It's already in this, and you can see how it's all Oh, it is? Down. Okay. Oh, well, maybe yeah. you maybe you'll be able to show it. Oh, yeah. great! So, so after this, we'll have a mess presentation, and then we'll be able to show it how uh, the this an attack framework, which was created by Mitre. If you don't know Mitre is, Mitre created the CVE framework, right? So, like the standards think tank. They are. They're part of the government. Yeah, they're they're a security think tank, and they're trying to, to uh, create a, a, a number of standards. So, here's an example of what uh, the micro attack framework covers. So here's the, the, the tactics, right? For example, you have things like execution, persistence, privilege, escalation, defense, station, credential access, discovery, ladder movement, collection, exfiltration, command and control. You have techniques that apply to Windows, Linux, Mac. So if you go deeper into this, you will see the operation that, that basically uh, matches the double technique matches the double tactic. So they also have uh, in some of these uh, um, uh, frameworks what is called adversary simulation plans. So here's so here's an example of AP3. AP3 is a known uh, uh, um, malicious criminal professional criminal group, and here's usually how they behave. They set up a C2. Software package, obfuscate files, eventually get the, the initial access. Once they compromise the host, they defend, they discover, evade defense, escalate privileges, access credentials, move laterally, or um, continue further execution. execution. Then on phase three, they will collect data, which basically means they will exfiltrate, compress, and stage, and uh, uh, Compressive stage, I'm assuming, is if you have a very large data that you want to extra trace, you're going to have to figure out how to get it out without uh, triggering some alarms. Because yeah. the, the pipe will get very large. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Or base 64 encoded. So, yeah. Right. But this, as, as defenders, right, should tell you that if I see very large uh, numbers of data, 
going out in the fight, they should raise some questions like, what's going on? Or, what are we doing here? Right? Even if it is on TLS, you may not be able to see it, but you can see the size of the fight, though. And you can see patterns on encrypted communication. That may tell you, hey, something might be going on here. All right. So let's let's make this clear, because there's there's this is this are new technologies. There's a lot of new stuff uh, that's referring to that. They do not replace pen testers. They don't. Pen testers is not replaced by this, uh, and they don't replace vulnerability assessments. They do test for vulnerabilities. However, they do not replace a, a, a comprehensive assessment. Remember where we, if you go back, right? Most of these actions are already written, pre-programmed, and defined operationally. Right? What a pen tester or vulnerability assessment person can do based on the knowledge of the ongoing test might differ from this and might even be uh, more comprehensive than just repeating a number of actions that apply to a, sim a, a campaign on a specific host or a specific target. So that's something you have to consider. Let's move, move again. Um, so, some of these attacks are way sophisticated for an average company, meaning, like I said before, if you get bombed by, by some street kid, he's, he's not likely to do this. Uh, most of the simulations are based on Windows attacks. There are some, some, uh, some clients for other operating systems, but they're not as uh, specific and, and, and comprehensive as what we're about to see. Um, descriptive actions represent a specific adversary, uh, a specific uh, tactic, uh, tools and procedures. So I will consider this TTPs a specific sample behaviors. This is not the universe. You're just saying, right, if it's almost like an antivirus. An antivirus has a static signature, right? So when I have one of right, there's in a specific registries, there's in a specific actions that I'm taking. So I'm just testing myself against, for example, WannaCry. That doesn't tell me that that defends me from every single ransomware strength. And that's how this should be considered. Okay, I know some of the techniques of AP3. I don't even think AP3 will repeat the techniques all the time. We're just getting samples of that and saying, okay, should they come with their most known behaviors, how will we react? Uh, and uh, these behaviors, again, AP3 is unlikely to attack John Doe's. Uh, their company. Uh, these actions can be customized for, for different scenarios and company policies. Uh, Uber Meta, which we're going to see today, uh, allows you to create your own actions. So that's pretty cool. Um, and then with that golden image, the results of these frameworks are not used. I mean, if you go and just throw in a VM and you don't customize it to look like your company, then you're lying to yourself. Whatever you're going to get from this is not applicable. So the idea is to apply it to the real deal for you to know, okay, it looks like if we were attacked by such, we probably will be compromised, right? I think you're going to get this right. Can you set up like a domain controller too? So you're you about to see that. I'll show you how I did it. Yeah. So uh, they don't prevent zero days. Again, we're going back to, this is almost like an antivirus, right? I, I keep going back to the, the, the idea of the antivirus where you already have a, a, a regex, a pre-registered rules that says if you match it, okay, I'll see you. But, but a zero day is usually not that. So it might give you a measure or response, but this will not prevent a zero day. Uh, useful for IR training. So basically it's like a, like a fire drill, right? And so are red teams. Red, red teaming also is, is, is a fire drill, right? Uh, depends on what you tell your organization. If you inform them that you're doing a red team or not. Valuable component of offensive um, driving defense posture, meaning offense must drive defense. It's better to try this type of things than just wait until you get compromised. Right? You should never do that. You should always be aware of what your adversaries may do and the type of attacks that you may not even know. You may not even be, uh, uh, even have the capable people or tools to detect it. And that's one of the valuable things about this. Because I can tell you, a lot of the actions that we're about to see, if, and there are certain places if you don't have endpoint or a GPO or a Windows GPO, you will never see this. So basically, will go all over the place. You will never find out. Why? Because you're not even logging it. 
Uh, certain scenarios in adversarial simulation might be safer than penetration testing techniques uh, or attacks that are potentially disrupted or destructed. This is an important point. There might be situations or, or, or scenarios where by you doing adversarial simulation, you don't have to be hitting a legacy host that is fragile. A mainframe that has an old TCP IP stack and that will go down if you start sending synapse. Right? Or a land attack, right? So this, there's a value of this. Uh, there's a value of, of, of having, for example, all Windows 98 or go Windows down. XP. Huh? Go down just because. Right. Exactly. So this this will allow you this will allow you to, to test situations where it's definitely too difficult to try this in production. Provides a specific targeted exercise. This can be used to, to simulate the specific cases against most valuable and defended assets. When I was in, uh, in Akamai, we used to have an adversarial resilience uh, unit. And what that adversarial resilience unit did was to come up with ways that our adversaries would try to compromise us. And I thought that was, that was valuable. Um, so this is a tool to follow that model understand where they may come in, where, where, what are our weaknesses, uh, how will we react, can we even measure this? Do we have personnel that understands how to do this? What are the procedures if there is an incident? Do we have a ticketing system? Do we have a rule of decision? How will we react to this? Visibility, uh, there you go. And then there's a chain of command. Because I remember I've been into places where, yeah, we found out what this was, but okay, who calls who? What happens now? Do we block it? Well, in order to block it, you need a ticket. Oh, once you send the ticket, then the guy kicks it back and says, you're not a manager, I can't approve it. You know, there's so many variables that can happen during an incident that you have to be aware of and you need to be ready to get it done. So he, so let's move into the adversarial simulation tools. The, the, the one that I'm gonna start with is Caldera. Caldera was what's, uh, basically created by MITRE and it's based on MITRE, right? So um, it follows uh, 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 the a set of systems and rules and uh, behaviors that we can execute either by installing agents at a computer or what they call a RAT, a remote administration tool. Um, and it will try to emulate how the attackers uh, will uh, act on this machine. So now I'm gonna show you screenshots. This is how the matrix coverage looks like. I installed the, uh, um, this framework. Uh, it's not difficult. You can install it on Ubuntu uh, 18. Uh, it takes Python 3, by the way. Uh, it's a little tricky because you need to set up by domain. Most of these things will, will act on Windows machines that are not domain. If you just put a simple workstation, a lot of the tests are going to tell you, this is not another domain. I can't do anything. So, so there's no value in that. Right. You could, you could, and you, you, you could try to do that, uh, but you can download the, uh, and just so you know guys, the, the Windows 10 creators uh, version, you can download it for free, and so can you download a Windows 2016 server. Right, you can download. You can download the Windows uh, the Windows 2016 server, and uh, you can download the Windows 2016 server and set up a quick domain, and then you need to install this, and this will have like a, a executables. Uh, let's move on. Oh, actually, wait. Go back for a minute. You see this? How the, we're on Windows, right? You see all the techniques, how they're listed, like command and control, for example, commonly used ports. Connection proxy. Um, we have things such as uh, collection. Uh, we have uh, obtain system, creating new processes. So you, you you see how this is measured in in terms of matching attacking actions to categories that are then uh, I guess show you a category uh, of a of a stage of attack, usually a kill chain. You, you guys know what kill chain is, the, the Loki market kill chain? A lot of it has to do with this. And then it will show you at what stage of the attack 
the action was performed, and then you can evaluate, okay, did we, were we able to prevent this, or did it happen? So what, would that, what do we need to do in order to, to, to be prepared for this? So let's go over, and this is the funny part. Uh, I actually installed a, what is called an agent. The agent, Caldera comes with two executables, an agent and a wrap. So usually you start the agent, you download the configuration file, and then it sets all the information, and you can see it here, uh, to, um, to actual, to, to, the, to the C2. This is like SUS. Have you guys ever set up SUS? Okay. Well, SUS is better than this, but yeah. <laughs> I like SUS better than this. It's basically the same, it's a button. It's, it's pretty much like a button. Uh, so, so basically, uh, the difference is that SUS obviously is malicious, but it's an amazing tool. Here, we're logging everything. So right now, I'm emulating Lazarus Group, which is the, uh, uh, the North Korean uh, uh, criminal or uh, professional criminal group, or APD3, known as APD3, and this tells me, okay, the, you are trying to emulate what these guys would do. So here's my target, and here's all the actions. And the green says, yes, I was able to do it. See that? So now, I have the details, right? I have the logs, I have a bunch of stuff. I can go and review with my IR. Okay, wait a minute, I was able to, um, can read this very well, but I was able to be able to enable guest. Okay, we need to go to our Windows security policies and see why I was able to, to uh, enable guest. Do you understand where I'm coming? Uh, I was able to execute, for example, create a new process without being an administrator. Why did this happen? You see now why the golden image is so important? Because if I just put a plain Jane image there, it was gonna do everything. It does not represent your organization. Uh, some caveats. The, uh, in Windows 10, the agent will be detected as malicious by Windows Defender, so you may have to whitelist it. Okay, let's, let's move on. So here's the, 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 this is just like SUS. SUS used to have this, or it still has it, where you select the, the agent, it's in a shell command, so, you, so I did host name, and then it shows me, right? It's a button. That's pretty, pretty much it is. It's, it's like a, it's like a, a simulator, like a file simulator where a number of actions that then I can log in and say, okay, this is what will happen if the following attacks had been performed. So there is a number of attacks that are in operations, and then you can run them, and then you get your logs, and you see how your organization did. Most of these are post-exploitation, right? We're, we already have the agent, so we're not exploiting it yet. You, you understand what I'm saying? So it's presuming, it's presuming you have been compromised, right? We, in this case, we're assuming that we've been compromised. It's not like a pen test that I go and I, I had to get my way in. In this case, it's, most of this stuff is post exploitation. Right, you got this. Right. Which, in my opinion, is, is, is a healthy assumption. Everybody will get compromised at one point. 70% success rate is a healthy assumption. Right. It's not an assumption, actually. There's a statistic. Right, there's a statistic that shows. And you are likely to be compromised, 70%. So let's move it on. Okay, so here's my next uh, uh, tool that I chose. There are many, there are many. There's Endgame has one, there's a Red Team something. Um, most of them are based on attack. So I picked two that were based on attack. One is Uber Data, and the other one was Caldera, which obviously is the original. And then I chose the, uh, the APT simulator. The APT simulator is actually a batch script. This is this is the simple of all of them because you don't need to set up a, a C2, you don't need to set up an agent. It's simply a batch script that runs in every Windows computer and is trying to address this. So basically, it uses a bunch of tools that then produces a dump file. And then in the dump file is your log file that you can review. So this is what they claim they're trying to see. We have APT, we have malware. So they're trying to see things such as rats, keylogger, exploit, rootkits, spear phishing, uh, force scanning, web shells. So now I'll show you how it looks like. Here, right, is a matrix of what the APD simulator is trying to measure and will address. So we have antivirus, network intrusion detection system, EVR, endpoint detection, 
security monitoring, compromise assessment. So you, there's, the, here's the matrix of that uh, batch file is going to cover. And then this is how it looks like. So you basically go into the image and run the batch file. And then it starts doing all these actions. You see this? So here, for example, you can see here that it says activating user guest account. The command completed successfully. This one is what's happening. This one's happening. Yeah. Right. So you can do this just like, like a web app entity. So you usually need a lower credit and a higher credit. Right? So we we try this with with a uh, with administrator. Uh, we can try this with a user and see where it goes, right? Um, then we we'll have to test before we go to this, we have to test uh, privilege escalation. Right? So here's a, a, an idea of what will happen. So for example, using start using to drop a uh, to storage shell code launcher injecting by shell on port one two three four into run the NL32. Um, yeah, so it's just download it and see if it works. Uh, I stopped it there because most of these are host only. I, I try to, to contain any damage that may happen in my lab. So I cut it off there, but you, uh, this will give you a, a good idea of what it does. You don't need to set up a, uh, your own infrastructure, meaning you don't need to, to set up. I, it took me an hour or two to set up the domain. It's host only. You have to deal with the DNS. And then, uh, um, then you have to set up the uh, Caldera, and then you have to make sure it connects. There are issues with the, with the dependencies on Ubuntu. Ubuntu 18 is new. So there is a number of things that you have to consider. But this, this is, I like this one because this is the simplest of all of them. Keep going. And then we have Overmeta. Overmeta is, a, is a, uh, uh, an adversary simulation tool that was created by Ubix. You guys know who Ubix is? And Chris Gates, which is, uh, I think his name is Carnal uh, Onich, I think. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, Carnal Onich. Oh, Carnal Carnal Onich. I think it's Onich. It's Onich. Yeah, Carnal Onich. Yeah, yeah, Carnal Onich. Yeah. So these two guys are pretty amazing, and they work for Uber. <coughs> and they created this, um, this uh, tool called Meta. Meta is pretty cool and emulates in a certain way what, uh, what Caldera does. But I think Uber Meta is more customizable because they have they give you the scripts so you can change the actions. They actually let you know how to create your own operations. So they have, uh, for example, examples of uh, other server simulations. And basically, you run uh, whatever is available. You can create your own, right? And then they will run it for you. Right? It's not as simple as I'm saying it. You know, every action you're gonna have to put. Okay. Uh, the, the command syntax is blah, 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 execute, okay? So, Meta is not easy to set up. It needs Redis, it needs Vagrant. Uh, if you guys are not aware of Vagrant, you have to set up Vagrant. So I had to learn Vagrant before I set this up. Uh, I tried to run Vagrant inside a VM, it doesn't work. So I had to run it natively on my MacBook, which means it's taking a lot of space from my hard drive. Right, so this is a caveat for you. A lot of uh, the, the latest, um, um, I guess, exploitation uh, POCs are either being done on Docker or either being done on Vega. So we all need to wear those things. It looks like uh, we're shifting away from the end. I'm starting to feel all oh, using the end. Because basically, you do Vega now, you put a link, and a bunch of stuff happens, and that's it. You got the. Uh, the, the server. I just did actually a, a trade advisory about uh, um, compromise of Reddit servers, which you probably will see it next week. And basically, you just type a number of commands and you set up a Reddit server right there without you need. I didn't need to download the ISO, I didn't need to run it, operate it, and start writing. So I just type a bunch of commands, deploy it. And I use that on my Lemur, by the way. Lemur is a great machine. I totally recommend it. Uh, it cost me less than the MacBook Pro, and I have it with SSDs, and with 32 gigs of RAM, and it kicks ass. It's system 76. Huh? 
and they find out. Right? They find out. So I would, I would definitely, I, I wasn't a skeptic for System 76, and not anymore. They, they really have proven to me that they are, and they are working uh, pretty, pretty good. I haven't had any, any issues, hiccups, or anything. So here, there are several conditions you have to. Vagrant creates the VM. Redis uh, gets the logs, and then um, I think I'm missing one more component, which I think is Celery. Uh, celery executes the action. So this is how it looks like. You know what else uses Vagrant? Uh, that is spoiler. Oh, really? To build a vulnerable server. Yeah, oh, okay. Cool. Oh, cool. I'll yeah, we, you can create you can create a VM and then create a Vagrant image and upload it, and it will download. This is there's a number of things that you need to do. But, oh yeah, I, I actually have thought about creating a Vagrant hire, but not sure if it will make sense at this point. But here, here's, as you can see, we'll go back to what we were doing. Same thing, look. TMD.exec then user domain, right? It's the same thing, adversarial action that have been recorded, have been seen, being replicated into a uh, golden image because I didn't have a domain in Vagrant, it found out that it was war group. So it gives me an error. It's just akin to this. You understand now? Okay. So I guess this will need more customization in order for me to get my value out of it. But again, uh, it depends on what your your DevOps is, I guess. Well, what is it that you use? Do you use Vagrant? Do you use Docker? Uh, would you use uh, VMware like I do? I created my right. I created my domain in VMware. Right? You, I guess I'm sure you can do it on Docker or or or, uh, or Vagrant. But definitely, I would suggest you guys to to get acquainted because most of the sharing of the exploits and stuff nowadays is being done either by Docker or Vagrant. I'm not sure if you just uh, this is sort of a tangent, but it was discovered that a bunch of Docker images had actually crypto coin mining. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. They make a they made a lot of money of it, so they, they, that that's the, that's the problem because you go into these repositories on the web. Somebody put that there. I can make a bigger image and put I don't know Monero, put my uh, Monero mining, and uh, you know I can I can put like a Windows 2016. I'm sure a lot of people will download it and then just sit down and until they find me, but. That's what these people did, so that can happen. So that's the uh, the, the Uber meta. It takes time to set up most of these uh, um, tools. Uh, to be honest, it takes time. It took me a good uh, week and a half to uh, meta, which is specifically a little difficult because there's a lot of uh, dependencies and things that you need to do in order to make it run. Caldera was a little more straightforward, but you need to create your domain. Right? Which is, I think, the right way to go. Because if you're going to measure, if you're really going to give value to any of this, you might as well take the time to replicate your organization's golden images, either being domain, either being workstation, and then apply this to it. You can also try to apply this to, uh, uh, a, uh, I guess, a production. Right? Instead of me doing that with the agent, I just install the agent on a true machine. On my neck and go for it. Some big companies have labs that are pretty much the exactly. same as the production. Exactly. Which is the one that should be it yeah. should be like that. So do you understand now where where this is going? At least you have an idea what are the SAR simulation tools, right? I I believe between these two, between the Ubermeta Caldera and the APT simulator, you get a good idea of of of, of some attacks. Uh, that is, they have quite a bit of coverage. They'll give you an idea of what will happen or what they will do should you be compromised. So let's move on. If you, if you had a VM, you could really just snapshot your production. So yeah, exactly. Yeah, you can do that. You just have to set up the tools. Right? And the tools sometimes require certain dependencies at the host in order to move on. So here's another. I took this from CSO Magazine. Here's a, other tools that I did not, I did not cover. Uh, most of them because they're based on MITRE as well. So I try over Meta because I know Mubix and I know, I know Chris Gates and I know they're awesome. So I said, I need to see what they're doing. If they're doing it, it's because of a reason. 
and Caldera because it's from Mitre. So I said, if both of them are based on attacks, then I'm, I'm covered on attacks. Uh, these other two are, are as well based on attacks, so I didn't cover them. Some of them require quite a bit of setup. You have to download them. Some of them are free. There's also an operating system uh, called Red OS, uh, Red Hunt OS, that has all this, which, by the way, I use any other one. So I was forced to do it by hand each one. Because the first, my first thought was that also I just download this, run these things, and that's it. My work is done. But I found out that it's the hard way that these things were not working. And because they were not working, then I had to create environments for every single tool. Uh, so here's another one that are well known: Red Canary, Atomic Red, Engay, Red Automation. And there is actually a company that presented a hack Miami called Veron or Veridum. They are very I think they do something similar to this. So here it tells you what the coverage is. Um, and it gives you some of the example of what you what you're gonna test. Do what? Are they called security instrumentation for very I know the CEO. Oh, is that how they call it? Okay, cool. I'm in DC, I got it. Oh really? Cool, cool. So uh, so here's another uh, open source, right? So let's uh, let's move on, and I think this is it for me. So, um, as far as conclusions go, okay, it's important to to for you to know the tools don't replace Pentest. So having a good sys admin that can set this up doesn't replace the pen tester for your security department. I'm sure that's the first thing they're gonna say. We can run this, and that's it. Inspire the security <laughs> analyst. <laughs> it's the anxiety of a live pen tester. The one? It replaces the anxiety of a lot. Of a little bit, right? Because it's simulated. You do it here, 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 right. Here. Right. No, that's actually true. Uh, and they don't replace bot hunting services either. Right? I don't think this do. What has happened, unfortunately, is that this has lowered the value of this. It's unfortunate. Uh, but I don't think they replace them. I don't think they do. I'm going to be honest. I think it's just another tool. But unfortunately, the market has shifted into the bot hunting because many aspiring pen testers have gone into the services. Uh, but in my opinion, uh, companies are short, uh, they're, they, they're putting short, a great talent, and, and uh, they're not creating what they should get. Uh, the tools partially depict sophisticated adversary actions. I think I want to be clear with this. This does not does not represent the entirety of the universe of, of all the, the attack actions that may happen in, 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 a, in any situation. You, you, you want to make sure, like I said, you have signatures for WannaCry, you, you might be protected to that strain of WannaCry. If they repack it or do something else, you might not. Same thing with this. These are scripted, known actions that are repetitive. Right? So you will know how to react to these actions and you may extrapolate or transfer this called learning, right? Should you have a similar attack? But this doesn't mean you're covered against everything. Uh, they don't replace a red team. Uh, I don't think any tool at this point replaces humans. Humans against humans is usually the best model to go. Uh, great for blue team training. Uh, there's a lot of customizations and caveats. Uh, it's heavily relying on Windows AD because, of course, most of our enterprises are based on Windows AD. Um, and sometimes not much of a value if you don't create an organization's golden image. So I wouldn't, you know, it's, that's like, I don't know, like sampling the wrong patient, right? You're not really getting anywhere. And sometimes there's a questionable accuracy because you need to disable, and a lot of times, EDR or AV. So if you disable that, how realistic this is, right? Um, however, these are a technologies that are an early stage, and they have some promising value uh, as we apply and customize them. I, I believe that there might be, this might turn to something else. This might turn to something else. Right. 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 Right.
Maybe you know, I revoked on SCCM administration. Yeah, well, a lot of times your golden image is super outdated. Yeah. And then you add on, you pile on all your updates and you pile on all your packages. By the time it finally gets out of production, hopefully it's there's a two hour wait and I got a new laptop one time to that update all the stuff. Yeah, so if there's a golden image, I guess you have to first do your regular deployment and then that will be your well, right. I think I think the issues are less around patching and more around the configuration I such as was I able was I able to enable a guest account as a mystery? Like it really boils down to different items that harden. So like you're patching, and then there's all these hardening things that we should do in our controls. And that gets to my question is with this, when it comes out with the result of this was wrong, this was wrong, does it tell you what you're supposed to do? No, it tells you, it it tells you this wasn't going to be done. So okay. then you had to sort of research. It's not like a vulnerability assessment, like I said before, that would say, hey, you have CVE, this. here's the patch. That may, I'm thinking that, that maybe VAs will, will uh, this this will be the natural uh, path for, for this, some of these tools. It feels to me like this type of tool will be a lot more, not a lot more useful, but a lot easier to implement if it came with like a hardening guide. These are the things that we're testing for. This is cheap code. Yeah. 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 At the, the specific level of this action. This is almost like an attack, this an attack simulation. A lot of security is brought down with GPO, um, you know, from Active Directory, so that's the in your golden image environment, you can make sure you also replicate all the GPO right, objects. Right, right. Yeah, sure. I would enable this log ID or enable the you know, logging of this. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's, right. That's, I'd, also, I'd also like to point out the interesting thing is with a lot of these places, <laughs> Microsoft was trying to push people away from the Golden Image. Oh. One of the things that Microsoft is very hot and busy about right now is um, it's a technology that Apple has where you get the computer, you ship it directly to the employee, and then at the very first sign on screen, they put their corporate email address in. Yeah, and then it just it simplifies it. It simplifies it, it connects up to your AD. And then it starts deploying things down after the fact. So Microsoft is heavily trying to push corporations to move to you don't deploy, you don't image it, you use the stock image then, and you sign in with your Azure AD account, and then you start coming down. It's just gonna make life a lot more difficult. Why? Because you it allow it'll allow corporations to have a wider variety of systems. You know, it gives the flexibility for a corporation to say, go to the store, buy a computer, sign in, and then we'll start to corporatize it. Right. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's not good. Is that called Jamf or something? Yeah. Well, so Jamf, so on the Mac side, yeah, it's on, it's on Apple has something called um, Device Enrollment Program. Yeah. And so Microsoft's answer is, is this, the Device Enrollment Program, which yeah, I guess my point is that how VMs are moving more towards microservices. Right. Computers, desktops, and we're going to move more towards the BYOD model where it's more difficult to, to figure out what's wrong in your environment. Right. Which is what's happening right now. Well, the thing is, when you do it, you do it in Microsoft Stadium. So it, it reduces your attack uh, to what you do. So let's say if you have a Microsoft Azure gateway in there, then you pay how to get onto the local private, like the AWS or other uh, servers so you have to So, yeah, I don't want to find that, but this is pretty cool. You like it? I do. Yeah. 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 This, this is pretty, like this is pretty new. This yeah. is, and, and it's making the rounds in Silicon Valley. So that's why every time I hear something like that, I jump on this. You never know. You know? Yeah. 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 Y
Hey, I think blockchain is a bit so. <laughs> <laughs> no. By the way, the, the, the Bitcoin is pretty bad, by the way, I heard. Keep going down, yeah. Uh, any other questions? Well, I heard Bitcoin was manipulated. Maybe what? I heard Bitcoin was manipulated back in like, November. That's why it shot up. Oh, really? Oh, wow. Well, we'll, we'll we're going to have to look into that. Uh, but uh, as far as this, any questions? Well, uh, I am going to post this on the Slack channel, and then you can play with it. If not, uh, any other questions, then uh, uh, you can always email me and find me there. And uh, I'll thank you. Thank you very much.